Okay, let's do this. It's time to figure out how long our reefing lines need to be. All right. Today is a really good day to do this because there's like no wind. A little bit of a breeze, but not much wind at all. So hopefully we can figure this out. Todd and I started traveling in an RV eight years ago with seven of our 10 kids. Now after three years of fixing up a hurricane damaged sailboat, we're ready to explore the world with our last three kiddos. All right, I need a halyard. Well, the blue one is our main. All right, how was this whole line tied? We gotta tie a tight one, don't we? Uh-huh. Was it this way? I don't know, Todd. I don't remember how to tie the bowline. Okay, I've been working on the boat, not the knots. That'll come, that'll come. I did Ready? it! Awesome, it's awesome. It's not short, it's not. It's can, close enough. I can tighten it. Okay, tighten it up. There we go. Perfect. So now we gotta raise the sail. Knots is a good thing, you know, when I was a scout master for a lot of years, I used to teach my scout the difference between a good scout and a great scout was knots. And it's been over 20 years since I've been a scout master. So uh, I'm rusty on those knots too. You're almost there. There you go. All right, I had a piece of tape. Better. Hey kids. Hey, I need a piece of tape out of that cupboard right there. Alright, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna measure here, okay? Because that is where the center point, this is where it would hook, right? So that is our height from here to there. We've read everything we can find on this subject, talked to friends, and we think we have the measurements right. Now we need to order one more line for the second reef. 12 and a half feet. So, so 24 just, feet to go up and down. Well, I need to go draw it out while it's in my head. This storm woke us all up as the boat started moving a lot. The lightning going on. Todd went out on deck to make sure everything was tied down good. Jason up next door. <laughs> We're all bouncing around. That's a pretty stiff breeze blowing. Hey, what are you doing? I'm just gonna throw one extra spring line on. Jason said 48.6 is what his thing's registered so far for the gust. So, off I go. It's more than 22 knots. <laughs> it's more than 22 knots it out says there. It's 33 knots. Yeah, the neighbor just said he saw 48 on his anemometer. So. Kind of crazy out. Glad we're not out at anchor. <laughs> Where's the puppy? She's, She's scared? Yeah, the cat is also scared. She's never been in this situation. Nope. This is her first time ever. Okay, so we've got our lines and now we're gonna see if we can figure out how to install these reefing lines. The manual for our boat only shows the rigging for one reef point. Our sail has two, so we're going to try and figure this out as best we can since neither of us know what we're doing. What are we going to tie this with? A bowline? line? Uh, for now? Or do they have a special reefing line knot? I have no idea. But I would do a bowline line for now. We can always change the knot later, right? So everybody needs to tell us in the description what not everybody tell us what we did wrong and how to fix it i don't remember is this the bow line do you need me to do it i do because i'm just going to tie a whole bunch of knots like this no 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 that doesn't work <laughs> that's the thinking face <laughs> all right so i did it there so now i have to transfer it to here with something around it that's where i get all there you go hold on just, I have seen them do this on YouTube. What you do is like flick it at that thing and it automatically does it. Okay, just hit it? Yeah. Yeah, like that. <laughs> it did go on. 
Excellent. Got to come through this side. Through the fair lead. Now the question is though, see I think the problem is, is this Beckett is straight in line with it. That is one of the problems, remember? I know, but you, as you recall, it should be 30 to 40 degrees pulling backwards, well, right? somebody else said that, but, you know, our manual says We can move this. it. The manual says this. I don't care what the manual says. The manual doesn't know how to sail. The manual's right. Okay. Well, we'll go with that for now, that the manual's right. All right, but so the second reef has got to go in, so we got to add, we'll have to add another cheek block and more fair leads. I have more fair leads. They don't have a curve on them though. I don't know how big of a deal that is because they're they're flat. You know? These look like they've been sanded out and maybe that's what the other ones need to be too, is sanded out a little. Why does this always have to be more complicated? The boat. What it is is complicated. Alright, let's go look and see what we got. See how they work. curve that is straight so what we decided to do was because there because there are fair leads on this side and a cheek block on this side and on the other side that we're gonna have a reefing line on each side Now you need to tie this guy to there. I gotta remember what I'm doing again. Are you not gonna just throw it at it? <laughs> hey, that was fast. That was good. I did it. That needs to be way tighter. All right. Two lines bowed. I mean, two bow lines. So the next brief is here. It should go through here. So you go raise it, I'll watch. Do you remember the terrible noise this made last time? Yeah. <laughs> oh. now I washed the winch, it should be quieter noise. Yeah. There you go, good girl, Abby. I'll pull the Right there. What are we doing? Why right? Oh, don't let go. I can't let go, Abigail. Don't let go. Pull again. Hold on, you got to tie it in a knot right there. I don't know if that's going to come out. All right, try again. Okay, don't let go, Abigail. Um, but yeah, this. This is going to have to be fixed for sure. Because this thing keeps coming around again. See, it's going to create a pitch point right there. You're going to kind of let it go. See how it's it up as we come though. Yes. We'd love to hear your suggestions on running the reefing lines and whether or not it should pull like that. The ultimate test will come when we take it out sailing. We're reefed. It was a little windier than we had planned. It was all nice until we decided to put the sail up. So now we have no more excuses. Oh no, we still have to reef the traveler. We could do that right now too if you want. Let's see if we can figure it out. 
If you've followed us for long, you know that we do most things together, including figuring out things that neither of us have done before. Well, I figured you'd just wrap like three or four loops around one end to the other, around the other one, and that's all you need. Just two or three of those. Todd and I don't always agree on how to do things. I say when it comes to the sewing, I should have the last say. If she's not careful, I'm gonna unhook the flapper for that bell and drive her crazy. Now that drives somebody else <laughs> online crazy. I love my bell. So, what I need to do is see where this goes first. So I'm gonna pull everything down to here first. One loop at a time. This is a project we have avoided because we have not been able to find clear instructions for how to actually run the lines for our main sheet. I was wrong. Who was wrong? I just pulled more through than I need to, so pull it through. Hurry up, like will you? More than you need to. It is still not right. Look at that. It's not. That is insane. That's what I told you before we did this. I said it's twisted in such a knot that I don't I don't know that it was done right. Well that's not what it looked like. It is what it looked like. It's exactly what it looked like. It was all twisted in a knot. Alright, so now we just have to pull this all out again. Well, if we do that, we lose our breathing. So pull your end there. Do you and your spouse ever just get really frustrated with each other? These kinds of projects where you're just like, it's a puzzle and each of you see something a little differently. Yeah, those are hard. I think we're gonna just take it all apart and start completely over again. Which is what I had originally said we needed to do in the first place. You were right. <laughs> Every now and then. All right, so if we do that, we gotta find a diagram of how to read this. I found one online, I'll go get it. You work okay. on that. I'll pull this apart. That's the right one. Right now we are right angles. Okay, with wait, each other. that's not right. Take it back. Take what back? Take that out of the middle. That's not where it goes. So now from this. It goes up and in. Okay, so if I go up and in. So I should pull, I pull all the way through. Right? Sure. So we are going in the wrong direction. Yeah, that's why it's important to tell me well, which end does it go up. It goes in the other side. So I gotta come in from this way. Yes. The problem we're having we is that we there, can't find an where. example to match the exact configuration of our setup and we're having to experiment a little. And it goes this direction. This nope. way? Uh uh. This way? Yes. Is that the middle? Yes. Okay, so see, I have a friction point right here. Hey, I'm just telling and you right here, what it said to do on that, the Harkin website. That should not be there. Okay, well, Todd, I don't know what to tell you. We are totally confused. We have searched and searched the internet. This is what we're finding kind of on the Harkin website. If you've got a link to something that tells us exactly how to do that, please put it in the description below and we'll keep working on this on our end. Just a minute, that's five, five goes through the back. Okay, so after starting over several times and turning the block with the Beckett around, we think we might have gotten it figured out. Now it's rolling, right? The friction point is still here, but it's not around the outside of it. It goes to the middle, so it's not really the same kind of friction point. It actually is it's just touching it. It's not wrapping around it. Six to one. Okay, so now boom is all the way out. And that's not that much line left. I think that's probably okay, don't you? So now the question is, if you come pull this back in, does it make a mess? You've got to keep it under some tension. Oh, yeah. Look at all those places of tension. 
That's normal. No, now it's all twisted. That's, see, how did that happen? Look at that. That's the twist that we just took out of this silly thing. <laughs> this thing right here is turning. Is it supposed to turn? Well, I mean, it's going to a little bit because of the load and the natural twist in the rope. In the rope. So. I think we need a new thing. They're just expensive as all heck. Yes, they are. For now, that's going to work. So um, now we're ready to go sailing. With now, we need to put the line in for the mizzen. Well, yeah, we got to do the mizzen one, and then maybe tomorrow you can sew this eye in, or you know, splice this eye in for that. This is where I'm glad you're such a scrounge. <laughs> this is where a hoar being a hoarder comes into its own, right? Yeah. Uh huh. Remember having that argument when we were scrounging these? We'll never need a bunch of those. I was wrong. How many times <laughs> do I get to say that today? I don't know. We're we're wrong equally amount of the time. Oh, you're such a peacemaker. That's right. I am. There was a gal that was selling a lot of things and she had just a whole bunch of these kinds of things. And then we also picked up a bunch of them in the yard. When they were crushing boats, we were able to get some of these pieces off of them. So they're coming in quite handy. Hey, kitty kitty. What are you doing? You're not supposed to be in the cockpit by yourself. Yeah, go back downstairs. Come on. Come on. Go back downstairs. There you go. There you go. Now you're safe. So I should go this way. Except that on the last turn, it has to go back to the mast along this way. So I have to do it the other direction on that first one. Since this is only a double to a single, it's not really Super twisted, so. Then it just comes back to that block. Okay, we're ready to go sailing. Everything is... Everything is reeved, everything is sheeted, everything is reefed. It's perfect. We have like three knots of wind right now. We could go out and learn. And we've found somebody that's gonna do that with us. But yeah. first, um, my I've gotta go um, give the eulogy at my dad's funeral. So we're gonna be out of town for a week to do that. And then we'll be back to the boat and pick up on our next adventure, which should be sailing, right? Exactly. Everybody, everybody cross yes. their fingers and knock on wood and all the good things to make sure that we have a good day that we can go out and go sailing. Cause we've had like two weeks of crazy wind. That's a nasty wind. Check out next week's video. We'll be sure to have one for you and we will see you then. All right, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> Get that on me? What? Dry loop. I don't care. Do you like to breathe it in? Yeah, no good. Hey, am I a better sailor than you? I don't think that has anything to do with actually sailing, <laughs> does it? <laughs> I can do better knots. <laughs> <laughs> That's like saying, hey, I know how to get a good deal on food. I'm a better cook. <laughs> <laughs> There you go, that looks better. Up and down the mulberry bush, the monkey chased the weasel, that was wrong too. That was wrong too. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad that I'm not the only one here. We've got all of our reefers in place. Yep. We don't smoke, so that's an accomplishment. What does that mean? Reef? Yeah, isn't reefing having something to do with smoking? Or a reefer? I think that's marijuana. Oh, that marijuana? I don't know. That's what happens when you grow up in a sheltered lifestyle. <laughs>